What up, Screen Fiends? I'm GB, and you're tuned in to Screenheads TV, where we like to discuss all the wonderful things appearing on your movie and your TV screens. So in this episode, we're going to discuss uh, the DC Cinematic Universe, the DCEU, and uh, the steps that they should have taken and the course that they should have went in um, when they were creating their cinematic universe. Um, now, I know I get a lot of shit <clears throat> for acting like I know more than these uh, big producers and directors and whatnot that are making millions of dollars, and uh, here I am on YouTube. But uh, I know good cinema. I've been watching movies my whole entire life, not just watching them, watching, re-watching, analyzing, and watching again. Um, so I think I have a pretty good grasp for good storytelling. I also write a little fiction myself, but, you know... So does everybody, right? Um, all right. So the way they had the way this is the way DC did it. They did Man of Steel, then they went right to Batman vs Superman, and now they're doing one. Uh, then they did Suicide Squad. Now they're doing Wonder Woman, and then they're doing Justice League, and then so on and so forth. Um. All right, their first mistake was in the slate, the way that they that they introduced the movies. So let me just talk about that real quick. So starting it with Superman, I think it's a smart idea. Even though I agree with their choice in going with a, an older, grizzled Batman who's probably been around a lot longer and has stories to tell prior to, to what happened in The Man of Steel. <clears throat> but... You can always tell those at a later date. I think Superman is a perfect way to start off the franchise. Um, you know, he's the character of light, the beacon of hope, the most hero -y of heroes out there is Superman. Um, so I think it makes sense starting with him. Definitely like the fact that they went a grounded route, but... Grounded doesn't mean dark. If any character should have been light, it is Superman. If you wanted to go dark with Batman, if you wanted to go dark with maybe one or two of the other characters, like Cyborg maybe, Aquaman, that's cool. You can't go dark with the whole bunch or even the majority of the bunch because then it takes away from it being dark and then everybody just seems like a sullen dickhead. Anyway, so Man of Steel... I enjoy the movie. I would keep most of it intact. Um, I would have had a de definitely a better arc for for Kal El, um, but we're, we're not getting into that right now, right? So Man of Steel first. Then I feel they should have went for either Wonder Woman right after Man of Steel or Man of Steel two, not Batman vs Superman. Man of Steel two, like it was originally supposed to be. Then you could have went into a Batman or a Wonder Woman right there. So then now you have your first four films. Two Superman films, one Batman film, one Wonder Woman film. And we now we got to know all these characters a little bit. And you can even have them bleed into each other's movie a tiny bit. I feel like Batman is the perfect character to be like your Nick Fury, your glue. Have him pop up in, you know, every movie here and there, right? Um, Alright, you didn't even have to do a Batman movie in there, but you really should. But like I said, you could always get acquainted with that character through the other movies. So let's just assume that they did that, right? Before Batman vs. Superman. So there we have the first four films. We know the characters of Batman in this world. We know the character of Superman in this world. Then you do Batman vs. Superman. Which is a perfect starting point and catalyst to bring you into Justice League. So again, Man of Steel. Then you have Man of Steel 2. Call it Superman, I feel. Because calling the first one Man of Steel made sense. He wasn't Superman yet. By the end of that movie... He should have been Superman. He wasn't exactly Superman. But, nonetheless, he was Superman by the end, full suit, really doing his thing. Right? Okay. So you got Man of Steel, then part two. Then you got either Wonder Woman or Batman. You could flip them and do them either way. I think uh, 
I think Batman should be next on a marketing standpoint because, you know, he's easy to sell. You put Batman in anything. You could put him in a pile of shit. Not much different from Batman vs. Superman. You could put him in anything and it's going to sell tickets alone just knowing that Batman is in it. <clears throat> so I think he would be really the best logical step after the Man of Steel 2. I'm always knocking shit over. Alright. Then... You go into Wonder Woman, which, you know, is more of a flashback film. I, I'm, I'm sure the Wonder Woman film that's coming out will be uh, a little bit of both. A little bit in the present, a little bit in the past. But mainly in the past, I, I would imagine. Um, I also think that they, they're they going to try and uh, make it as different from Captain America as possible. So maybe it will be a more even split of present day versus... Um, World War One. Um, all right, so then you got Wonder Woman, and then we roll into Batman vs Superman, right? Because now we know both of these characters. The movie means more now, right? And it's not just I know Superman, I know Batman. It's I know this Superman, I know this Batman. I know what each one of them is about. One of them should have been light. One of them dark. One of them more a beacon of hope, while the other one a beacon of fear. And that's a perfect contrast to put both of them together. You don't need Doomsday. You don't need Wonder Woman. Granted, I think she should make a cameo because she's one of the big three to bring us into the next movie in my, my idea, which would be the Justice League. So yes, yeah, she should be in it, but she doesn't need to be a part of the fight, a main character, anything. Definitely needed Lex. He needed more motivation, more heat, more fleshed out. I don't have a problem with Eisenberg, but but uh, he was just basically, this is how I felt. We need to put villains in this movie, so let's shoehorn a, a Lex storyline in that doesn't really work. Lex should have been introduced in the second Superman movie, along with Kryptonite. Getting us a feel for who these characters are. Even if he's not the main villain. Or at least Superman doesn't know he's the main villain in Man of Steel 2. But just his presence. Us getting to know Lex. Maybe we trust him. Maybe we don't trust him in the way he you know, portrays himself. Whatever. We get introduced to Kryptonite. So we know more about Kryptonite. So you don't have to explain all this shit in Batman vs. Superman. And this is what Marvel did right. When we went into the Avengers, we knew every character in the movie. We knew the villain. We knew everybody. You didn't need no explanation. Let's just get to the... Let's get to the fun of it. Batman vs. Superman had too much to explain. And not enough connection with these actors playing these roles. There's other problems in the movie too, but we'll just stay with that for now. Right, so you, if you do it this way, boom, we get to know all three of the Holy Trinity of DC, all in the first uh, four movies. Then we get a Batman vs. Superman. Two heroes going to add it. A movie that everybody's been waiting to see. It would have been more hyped. It definitely would have been a better film. Just by us knowing the characters more. And then you can... After you do the first Justice League, you don't have to explain much. All you got to do is explain Flash and Cyborg. And that's it. Now, they could do, they could have did a Flash and Cyborg movie before Justice League, but I get it. You want to get it out there. They rushed it too quick. All we got was one Superman, a half a Batman movie, because that's basically what Batman vs. Superman was. Superman had, what, 40 lines and the whole thing? You know what I mean? It was basically a Batman movie. And... And then we got Suicide Squad, which was a noble attempt. Loved the actors. Loved the director. Loved the portrayal of the characters. The story went to shit. The Joker should have been the villain. I don't understand why they did Enchantress. I feel like it was just so they could have a minion of disposable, non-human baddies in those creatures. Whereas if it was the Joker, you know, you'd have to be killing henchmen and people constantly. 
which if they're going for a darker route, I don't see what the problem was. I feel like they wanted it to be too much like Guardians of the Galaxy, and Suicide Squad and Guardians couldn't be any different. The only thing that they're similar is that they both deal with rogues being heroes. Well, not even rogues. One is rogues, the other one is flat-out villains. So, all right. I understand you want to do a Suicide Squad in there maybe before Justice League to get us acquainted with some villains. Fine, but you got to do it right. It should have been a better movie. Um, I would have loved to see what David Ayer would have done without the studio chopping and dictating behind the scenes. They chopped up that whole movie. They dictated behind the scenes and they I'm, I'm sure of it. That the Joker was meant to be a bigger role and the Enchantress wasn't supposed to be the main villain. I'm certain of it. I, I, I don't care what you tell me. So, yeah, then you could do Suicide Squad. You do Flash. You do Cyborg. You do Aquaman. You can do them all after the Justice League. To me, narratively, it makes sense to do a lot of those movies before Justice League. But that's a lot of movies to go through. To get to Justice League. And if you want to get it out quicker. You want to make the money. Again I understand the business side of it right. You want to make the money. You want to get it out there to the masses. Especially while the superhero trend is so hot. Okay so then you do Flash, Cyborg, Aquaman. After you do the first Justice League. <coughs> now mind you. In the first Justice League. The villain. Whoever that was may, may be, I think it was way too soon to throw Dark, Se Dark Side and, and Steppenwolf in the first movie. You know, I think you should have had the first Justice League villain been more of a, a human threat. Now, I know what you're saying. Why would you need metahumans for a human threat? But I'm not just saying just a human threat. You know, you have an uh, let me not say that a human threat, an earthly threat. So you have bad metahumans. You know, you have other people that are like our heroes, but villains. And that should have been the first Justice League. And then we could have been introduced to some of those villains already throughout the course of those first five films. We would have seen Lex. We would have seen whoever the Batman villain was. Joker, whatever. If you did Suicide Squad before Justice League, you had those villains introduced. So then you could have had a real um, a real threat for Justice League to come together with an earthly threat. And then in your second part of your films, after you do the first Justice League, when you're introducing us better to Flash and his world and Aquaman and, and all of these other characters into their world, then you, you start to throw in seeds of Dark Side, seeds of Steppenwolf. You know, you st we start to learn about the mother boxes. The first half should have been all about the heroes and, uh, and, and whatever... Um, major villains that were going to be a thread through that first part, which I think should have been Lex. Right? I would have played Man of Steel out a little differently. I would have played Man of Steel, Man of Steel out to where, you know, at the end, where the whole first movie is basically about Superman learning to deal with those powers, how to control them, how to use them, how to use them safely. And then the second movie, you have him dealing with the fact that he had to kill Zod and he doesn't want to kill anymore. He's going back to what his father said to him, even though he didn't say it in The Man of Steel, he should have. Jonathan Kent should have said something to him along the lines of, you know, life is precious, you can't kill. Nobody has the right to take away a life. That way the seed is planted on how it's ingrained in Kal-El's mind that killing is wrong. So then when he finally kills Zod out of the anger, you feel it so much more. And it would carry into the second Superman movie to where now he's learned how to deal and master his powers and he knows how to use them safely. But can he protect everyone? That's the thing. He wants to protect everybody and save the world. And this Superman just seems like he doesn't really give a shit. He kind of seems like he's just there because he can be. 
you know, the bomb goes off at the courthouse and he fucking flies away at the end instead of saving people. Even the Amazing Spider-Man 2 had Spider-Man saving bystanders. All the Spider-Man movies had some sort of Spider-Man saving bystanders, I, I believe. And that's what Superman should be about. It shouldn't just be about the fight with the villain. It should be about saving people. It should be about trying to do the right thing. Being there for all these disasters. It's not just about the villains, right? So... That's what the second movie is. It's him learning how to do all this safely and dealing with the fact that you can't save everybody, but you can do your best. And then, you know, the third Superman movie, which you would put in the second half after Justice League, you know, you deal with Brainiac. So the first one, you got Zod, perfect first villain. Second one, you got Lex and Metallo, because you're dealing with Kryptonite. So Metallo is a perfect villain. You just do him more believable and you don't basically have him be the fucking Terminator. You know, but you have something where it's a guy who's using kryptonite um, to basically beat the shit out of Superman, right? And as he's dealing with kryptonite taking away his powers and all that, you know, he's also dealing with trying to learn how to be, be able to save everybody. So he's weak, too, in the second movie. So... It's harder for him to save people. It just goes so well, right? So the second one, then you have Lex and Metallo. And you're building Lex up to be a major baddie throughout your whole thing. You know, not much different than Loki, but even better than Loki. <clears throat> um, so that's your first two Superman movies. And then, you know, you can really have fun with all the rest of the characters. You know what I mean? Superman should be the one who's light. You go dark with Batman. Then Wonder Woman, you can kind of go light again, but you can make it gritty because, you know, it's our first real female superhero movie, so you want it to be badass. So, yeah, you keep it somewhat gritty, but it should still be light. She's another character that should not be dark. Flash, another character that can have dark themes, but the character needs to be light. It looks like they're going to go that route with Flash. You know, but the movie's in trouble. All these rewrites and everything, you know? Aquaman, you go dark with Aquaman. I can see Aquaman being dark. Because when he's light, he's cheesy and corny. I was excited for this Aquaman with Momoa. Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad soiled me for this franchise. I was stoked after Man of Steel. Even though it wasn't the best movie and I would have changed some things. After Man of Steel, I was stoked to see what they were going to do. And... And they really just dashed all of my hopes with Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad. Where they're not the worst movies ever. But to continue to build your franchise off, no good. You, you ruin the characters. And when you ruin the characters, how can you really go forward with that character? It's unforgivable. You gotta get the characters right. Number two thing that Marvel did right, other than introducing you to all the heroes before the Avengers... And making you care about them all first. They totally understood their characters. They could have went a little darker with some of them. For phase one, I think they did it perfect. My problems with them lie in phase two and phase three. But that's for another video. Marvel's not perfect either, believe me. By no means. But they definitely make a hell of a better product than what DC has put out so far. I have nothing but, but high hopes for what they can do. In my opinion, I know it's risky. A lot of people give me shit about my theory all the time. After Justice League, they should just scrap it. If they have Aquaman filmed, whatever they have filmed that they actually have real, real money into, play it out. Anything that's still in pre-production and it's not ready to go, dump it. And once you're done with whatever you got, wait a couple of years... Even if you wait for the superhero craze to kind of die down. Because it's going to die down. It's got to. I don't want it to die down. But it's got to eventually. There's got to be fatigue sooner or later. And you wait for it to die down. And then you come out with your realistic approach to these characters that you understand. And you have people running the show that understand the characters. And not just how to market a movie. Hey, DC... WB, you guys have been great at marketing your movies. Fantastic. All your trailers get me excited. But then when I see the product, it's underwhelming. Or it's bad. 
So, that's my opinion. Scrap it. Start from new. I did another video very similar to this, but I didn't get into as much detail as what I think they should do to, to, to really make it work, what they should have done from the beginning. I'm going to go over it one more time. I know you're probably sick of it. Man of Steel. Man of Steel 2. Then a Batman or Wonder Woman. Back to back. Doesn't matter which way you put them. Batman and Wonder Woman. Then Batman vs. Superman. Then possibly a Suicide Squad. Then Justice League. Then you roll out the rest of the characters into your Phase 2. And that's how you do it. You keep some gritty. You keep some light and colorful. You keep, you keep it all as grounded as you can. Man of Steel did a great job of that. At keeping things grounded where Superman didn't feel too overpowered. A lot, you know, that, that's a mistake in the comics a lot of the times is him being too overpowered. They were on the right track. I think their problem was the studio involvement and their choice of, of Zack Snyder running the show. You want him to direct some movies? That's great. He shouldn't be overseeing the whole universe. You should have got somebody from the start, like, I'm sorry to compare it, but like a Kevin Feige that loves the material, loves the characters and understands them and wants to make quality movies. Not just cash grabs at the box office. Using character names and faces. Alright, I'm done. I know you're tired of listening to me if you even sat through the whole video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm sure you're going to um, let me know if you didn't like it. So, uh, uh, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, show me some love down below if you liked the video, of course. Even if you didn't like it, show me, you know, show your hatred down there. Uh, you want to be part of the Screen Fiend fam? Please, subscribe. Uh, share, like, all that good stuff. And uh, I will see you guys next time. You have a good night.